Alright, so back at uh, the painting here, the paint is dry. Uh, I wanted to show you what I was talking about with the watercolors and acrylics. So over here, if you zoom in, you look up here, this is the acrylic and the pen does not bleed with the color. But here, I put some watercolor down. If you look very closely, you can see ink bleeding, mixing with the color. So that's why I went with the acrylic. I'll come back up here. Camera set. Okay, you'll be able to watch me as I start drawing. I've got my reference photo up here. I've got this pen here, which you can see has a very fine edge and a little flatter edge. So it allows me to get a thick line and a thin line. So you can see the differences in the, th the thicknesses of the line there. And what I'm looking for is the dark and light values. And some of the dark values I can use solid areas of color. In the, some light areas I can just let them be the white of the paper. Uh, so here in the hair I'm kind of following some of the the direction that her hair is moving. Uh, I'm not going to go completely dark, uh, but we want to develop a source of value. We want there to be a contrast between the light and the dark areas. That is the key to a strong piece of art, whatever you're doing. There's a very distinct difference between those areas. So in these spots, you see I'm using that wider edge to fill in a little quicker, just like I use the larger brush to fill in the large areas of the background. Areas that are kind of in between here, I will use just the, the thinner edge to make some thinner lines.
And I have some of these in a wider format. So in some of this area up here in the hair. Um, I'll show you the different sizes I have here. So I can get some wider strokes covering larger areas quicker if I want some more larger flat black. And this one here is really quite large. I don't want to completely obliterate the detail that I can get, but as you can see, I get some streaking with that, which it's kind of interesting if I work quickly, the ink can't push through the pen fast enough, so I kind of get some hair strokes quicker than I would with the, the smaller ones. And I kind of like that feature. I'm going to bring that down in, into here as well. So you can kind of see that the hair is coming together. You can see our dark versus our light giving that contrast that helps give some good definition to our our piece here. I'm going to continue that here on the other side. You, know, you can see some of these lines that I put in that kind of give me the indication as to where I was where I saw dark values on the drawing when I started from the reference photo that I knew I would come back to. And just like you know these also have the same thin edge that the you know the uh, the smaller one did. in these value lines. I'm trying to treat everything as almost like it's a shape and not necessarily a square or a circle but when you look at a if you looked at a ball that was had a source of light on it you will see a highlight area and it will get darker as you go around and then there usually is a reflected light on the edges of it. I don't have a ball right here close to my desk, but maybe on some of the other video I'll find one and show you what I'm talking about. But I want to give it a shape. I want it to, to feel three-dimensional, even though it's just a drawing. I'm going to switch back to my smaller one for some of those uh, finer details that these larger pens can't get into. So I've got my hair pretty well defined here. And I'm pretty happy with with how that's come out. So I'm going to keep on going here. Uh, I'm going to define the face 
I kind of usually will like to start get that shape. I really want to define that shape. I'm not going to let the, the paint uh, dictate exactly where I'm going to put my line. Even my pencil lines aren't always going to be right on, and I'm okay with that. Um, You see, I went from a thick line up here, and then I turned my pen, and I got a finer line. It helps bring this to the foreground, where the neckline is thick, and the shirt kind of goes back behind it. It helps helps with that volume, just like we're talking about up here with the darks and the lights. Uh, so. Well, I probably should have made that a, a thin line. I'm going to keep that a thick line, though, just because it's an outer defining line uh, for me. Uh, I have my reference photo up here. I'm still looking back at that. Even though I've already got my drawing in, I'm still going back, pulling in some of those details. Um, flower a little bit lighter. I want that to be a, a sort of secondary uh, type of image. Uh, it's a nice extra piece in here, but I definitely don't want it to be my main focus. It's just a, an accessory that it was on her, her clothes there. Again, I, I turned kind of got rid of that in the photo. It was very washed out. It's very light in her face for the most part. So I'm not going to do a lot of work on her face. As you see, I, there's very little marking. Uh, I'm going to add a little shadow uh, on the side of the nose uh, where it casts down over there. There'll be some over on the lip and then over here on the cheek and on the chin and the neck. Uh, but otherwise, uh, it's just going to be the the definition of the eyes, the bottom of the nose, and uh, the lips there. And there's not a lot going on on the rest of her face, which you might have seen in some of my other drawings. Uh, a lot of the people I draw, uh, perhaps uh, I drew them when they're older and their face has wrinkles, or they have facial hair, or uh, I've accentuated some curves and wrinkles that are in the face, uh, and where her is going to be left. Uh, this was a younger photo of her left pretty smooth. A lot of the details in the hair uh, and uh, I'm able to capture the likeness a little better without adding some of that extra stuff. So here we're going to come into the eye. Uh, I'm going to go back in and thicken some of that up, but right now I just wanted to um, just get that real basic part down in. A lot of times, if you look at somebody's eye, there's a, there are highlights, there are reflections left, especially in the very middle of the eye. The very center has a dark area, and then out from that, there is where you would see the color in somebody's eye. Uh, and a lot of times, there's some lines coming in from that that you can see. Um, she has a small little area right under the eye. Her eyelid is fairly well defined, invisible. Uh, but there is some, some shading in there. We have delicate eyebrow. Sometimes the corners of the eyes might have a little extra darkness underneath the eyelid. A little extra shadow will thicken that line up. Uh, usually there is some sort of shading inside the 
inside the nose between the the nose there. Uh, I'll come back and do a lot of that work afterwards. Um, that way it's a little more uniform across the face. Um, okay, so we're going to come to the nose. And the nostrils tend to be one of the darker parts of the face. Those are usually pretty dark. Uh, whereas some of the rest of it can be a little fainter. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to do any more than I'm going to get rid of that line there with the pencil. those details on the curves that are visible in her, her mouth. You know, it's not just a straight line that goes across. So drawing very, very light, so that if I needed to make adjustments, if I missed something when I did my first, first attempt, I'm able to change how that line is. I'm not, not going to get myself stuck to it. Again, I'm going to leave that highlight in the center part of your eye. Come in with some. Her eyes are pretty light. I don't know what color they were. Uh, it's not. I knew I was doing a black and white version of her, so I was not concerned with finding the color of the eye. Uh, but that's one of those research things I would have done if I was doing a color painting of her. Again, a little bit of a underside of the eye. Otherwise, it's pretty washed out. Again, another delicate eyebrow. Some people have very pronounced thick eyebrows. Hers are not, not too much to them. All right, so we've got most of our details in, actually. Uh, at this point, it's just going to be uh, putting in a lot of that shading. Uh, I want to thicken up underneath her uh, the back side of her eyelid there it gets a little, a little denser same here right up over the top in my reference photo it's very dark there's a, a large area that's recessed back in where the eyelid goes behind the eyeball So now, some of the shading I'm going to start doing is going to be done more with just smaller lines like you're seeing here, here and there, on the eyes. Um, as opposed to completely coloring it in black, that would, that would defeat what, the purpose of what I'm trying to do here. It would completely lose that detail. So again, watching my reference photo, we're checking it all the time. Adding that in. Uh, sometimes I like to follow the curves of the face.
notice I'm not going up to the very edge. I'm leaving a white line there. I was talking about the ball with the reflected light. Even in the shadowed area, usually you'll see some reflected light along those edges. So it's going to help in your three-dimensional look to have a slightly darker section right along that edge. And then have it go a little bit lighter inside, but leave a light area in there. Uh, if you had warm light coming from this direction, you would have a cool reflection if you looked at it color-wise. This is a fairly dark reflection around the nose, where it comes down to. And then in that little ridge in between the nose, or un underneath the nose, above the lips. That's a, a very common darker area that you'll see. Since it's a little more defined area, I'm gonna I put that little outline line in. Again, we're going to have some reflected light, so I'm just going to come up and give a little definition to the very top ridge of the nose. Sometimes I do this and it just doesn't have enough darkness to it, so I can do extra lines in between. I can put them closer together to make it look darker, or I can come down and add in some additional lines going the opposite direction. And they call this uh, hatching. You're making a hatched lines, which help make that area just a little bit darker and if I really want to I can come in with a thicker line on that nose in a section thin it back out usually it's gonna get a little darker right there maybe a little darker right here uh, I wanna I definitely want to darken up in here but you can see how much darker that got by adding those extra lines in. Otherwise it looked similar to what we had over on this side, which I didn't want quite as dark. I want that nose to come forward. All right, so now the lips. The upper lip usually tends to be dark from the center line where the mouth splits tends to be dark right along that bottom edge, this bottom edge right here. So I'm going to put some lines very close together as you can see. And this is, usually the lips are much darker than the side of the nose might be. But, and sometimes at the top of the lip it lightens up. So I'm just going to leave that. I've already got a defining line at the top. Uh, and I might want to just Come in with some of those hatched lines. Fill in around the edges. Uh, and now, on the bottom lip, the opposite happened. Oh, actually no. It, usually the, the top of that is light as well. Right, so from the middle, this is I'm not going to do anything right here. 
It's all about that contrast, that volume. So now I'm going to come below on the bottom part of the lip, below that lip, and start putting in some lines there. It's, it's fairly muted on that side. some lines there and then there's also another decent shadow coming down from here the shape of the mouth, chin. See my lines are kind of curving, it's kind of following how a face would be rounded. It helps give that give that volume, give that shape. That's what we want. Again leaving my reflected line. here. Sometimes the very bottom of the chin, there is a little indentation if you look at, at certain people's chins. So she happens to have that. Uh, I'm gonna accentuate that a little bit. All right, our face is pretty well uh, we're just gonna do a couple lines there just to help bring that nose forward. Uh, let's check her eye over here. Uh, I would like to do a little bit up in there. Okay. Uh, checking my reference, going back, looking. Take a step back. I look at it. I see what I'm, what I'm thinking, what I'm liking, what things I want to address, adjust. All right, now we'll go up to the side here, and we'll add in some of this shading that's that exists under here. Reference photos are invaluable tools. Without those, I would never be able to do the likenesses. Uh, I can't just see somebody and just draw them. I have to constantly look back. And maybe some people are able to do that, but I am not one of those people. I've worked very hard. I've dedicated a lot of time and effort to, to doing this because I love to do it. And not everybody does, and that's okay. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, whatever it is that you love to do, uh, dedicate yourself to it. Give 110% all the time. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm zoomed in on my picture here. I'm going to move down so I can work uh, on the neck area. So I've got two areas to consider here. Right, we got our chin that's forward. The neck is underneath that. That's forward of this area that we made that little light line there. So I want to distinguish that. I'm going to really bring that forward, I'm, but I'm not going to follow any sort of lines. Here, these curved lines give a little more interest, a little more depth and shape. So this is an area that I want a focus in. The hair, the face, and this neck down here is a secondary image. I need it to help shape, but I'm not so concerned with putting detail in there. Um, putting the detail, you want to draw people's eyes to a certain point, whatever your piece is. So I'm working on details up here to really draw that. These are just accentuation pieces. All right. 
So these are dark. I'm just going to kind of follow these along. Again, there there is some some shape with that highlight line, but I'm not following the curve of the neck. And I'm probably going to come back through and cross hatch that as well, just to make that a little bit darker. Uh, and there's kind of a shadow that kind of is cast along here. Kind of gets a little darker right about here, and then lightens up in there. So I'm going to come the opposite direction with my lines. See that little bit of cross hatching it makes a big difference. Alright, and we'll stop there and uh, we'll pick up again next time.